think of computers. What about them? Well, I mean, that's in the in the last few years. You know, in uh, a uh, hundred years in our existence. Okay, they've been dabbling with anything even close to a computer. No, nothing before that. Yeah, c- computers are a good thing, and it baffles me as to how they came about. When you think uh, a computer chip is just made out of sand, now for someone to come up with that, you go, "This, there must have been some sort of alien involved here." What do you mean? Why <laughs> do you think that? <laughs> so I love it. So the frisbee, rubbish. Anything too clever? Well, it wasn't an invention; it was an alien. <laughs> So there's nothing between frisbee and computer <laughs> chip. What I'm saying is, it's not even an idea, is it? What do you mean? A computer chip. Where's that come from? Oh, it's amazing. Well, that, it's it, astounding, it, yeah. So you think it was an alien? <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> Great. Because I, I can't believe that someone would go, right, I want to make something that will hold information and be able to do... I know, let's use some sand, we've got loads of that. You, you go, what are you, you don't... Well, that's what genius is, though, but isn't God, it? there's no alien involved. No, but when I say alien, I don't mean an alien came down here and said, you know, oh, do you want to buy this? There could have been <laughs> yeah. uh, a, a spaceship uh, crash, right? Right, yeah. And th- there's all them rumours, isn't there, in that anger. They've got the spaceship, they take it apart, they go, yeah, wheels, we've got them, yeah, 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 steering wheel, yeah. And then they go, hang on, what's this here? And they find the chips, and they break it down, and they find Carl, the sand. But that, as an explanation to human genius, is nearly as ridiculous as the Adam and Eve explaining uh, life on Earth. Uh, how could you tell that to someone without going red? I mean, I always worry about that. Where people, like people who believe in Adam and Eve, don't they wish there was a slightly better explanation with all the evidence but, we've but, got? But do you know what I mean? With all the evidence for evolution what? that they think the Earth is five thousand years old, and God made. Adam out of some dust, and then he went, oh, I need a bird. It's all right, I'll make it out of your rib. Yeah, right? but there's loads of things that you go, oh, this is a bit embarrassing. I bet Charles Darwin, when he said, we've all come from apes, I bet he sat at home going, should I tell about the frisbee first? But the fact that sand makes computer chips is not the interesting thing. The interesting thing is how the human being discovered that, uh, what am I talking about, sand <laughs> makes computer <laughs> chips, that silicon can have information uh, uh, put on it. But we're made out of Oxygen, nitrogen, carbon, yeah. do you know what I mean? And hydrogen. It, uh, yeah, but fascinating. that's nature. You see, yeah. nature is amazing. You can't beat nature, right? No. It comes up with some amazing things. Yeah, but man is nature. Don't forget that we are, we're an animal. We're a brilliant ape. Now, it's, it's, it's clear to any sensible, reasonable, educated person that, that we did evolve from um, uh, apes, or rather, we had uh, a common ancestry, and that we're closest to, to the chimpanzee. We're actually 98.6% genetically identical to a chimpanzee, Carl. Um, we're closer to a chimp than a chimp is to a gorilla, genetically speaking. I just find that hard to believe when you... Well, I'm at telling you it's true, so no, what, no, what, 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 what are you finding hard to believe? Well, your eyes... You, your own eyes are what, what sort of comes up with a lot of uh, thoughts... No, you know, no, 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 no. One's eyes don't come up with thoughts. No, Two, but what I'm saying is, you, what you, through, mean is through you, your own eyes, you look at things and make up your own decisions. So if there was no Darwin or anything, yeah. and I was sat somewhere, and someone yeah. said, right, we're going to bring a few animals in, one of them's related. Right. Uh, they're all related. All right, but, but they're all related to you, but one's not so long ago, right? And they brought them in, and they lined them up, and there was a chimp stood there. Yeah. And a gorilla. Right. And, uh, what's another one? A orangutan. orangutan. Right. Yeah. Right, a girl, the orangutan, send that out. <laughs> I'll be first to go. So he's definitely not linked to me. Yeah. Uh, See, I disagree, but there we go. That's yeah. just looking at you. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the air colouring, there's none of that in our family. But there's no air. Go. <laughs> <laughs> I like the fact that it loses out because it's ginger. So that's gone. Right, so I'm left with a gorilla and a chimp. Yeah. I would go for the gorilla. Well, it's a good guess, but you'd be wrong. Um, so we are much closer to the chimpanzee, okay? 98.6% genetically identical. Think of that. We only differ on 1.4% of well, our that, genetic that, that, that makeup. That must be the arse. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot of difference. 
told Suzanne that I had read that we will have spoken to aliens by the year 2025. <laughs> Ricky once told me that if a lion could speak English, it still couldn't have a good chat with us because its life is different to ours. If that's true, we've got no chance with an alien. I'd be worried that an alien could read my mind. I had that problem once years ago when I worked in a studio making cassettes. Some mind-reading woman was having some cassettes made. She waited while I did them. She had a small dog. I knew she was trying to read my mind, so I just thought about the dog. I thought that would confuse her, because she wouldn't understand why I was thinking about her dog. That's amazing. So, so he, firstly, how did you know if she was a mind-reading woman? Everybody who came in having cassettes done, you'd find out about what the job is. So, you know, if it's a band or whatever, it might be a police station needing blank cassettes to interview people. Yeah. And she had them um, to sort of use during a thing where they do mind-reading and stuff. So right. you get a... A recording, a recording of the, of uh, yeah. And she was just there and she was staring at me, like that, just looking over. And a dog was sort of looking worried, and they pick up vibes, don't they? No. They do. And why was... Were they looking... I'm not being funny. Were they looking at the roundness of your head, do you no, think? they were just, just looking at me, and I was sort of panicking a bit. And the more that I was thinking she's reading my mind, I was thinking she's, she knows that I know that she's reading my mind. So I just stopped thinking about her reading my mind, thought about the dog. What were you thinking about the dog? Just running about on the beach. <laughs> No, just so she thought, oh, hang on a minute, it's not his mind, it's the dog's mind I'm picking up. <laughs> oh, so you thought she'd go, oh, no, I'm getting a little tan up. I've got a cross line here. I met out with my mate Laurie. He said he was in a pub at the weekend and saw a bloke whose hands were on the wrong arms. <laughs> no! No! What do you mean? Well, oh. he, had his, he had his left hand on his right arm and the right hand on the left arm. I don't think this would be a problem if he's been like that from an early age. When I was in Ripley's in LA, I saw a bloke whose head was on back to front. That's more annoying, isn't it, than your hands? <laughs> <laughs> isn't it? Now then, would you walk... How would you walk? Would you be walking backwards, Carl, so that you could walk... So you're basically walking forwards? I reckon or, I'd walk would... sideways so nobody would sort of tell the difference. It just looked like... <laughs> He solved it again! He's thought it through. <laughs> ah. Got home and read the magazine. There was a story about a baby that was born that looked like a frog. <laughs> what magazine's this? Uh, that made the news, that. That was in oh. a proper newspaper in the end. It didn't really have a neck or top half of its head. It would look all right if it always wore a scarf and a hat. The world would be a more interesting place if there were loads of different types of humans like there are creatures. Then some people would be good at certain jobs. Spider people, ant people, builders. Cockroach people, dustbin men. <laughs> Good idea, isn't it? I mean, I, I, cockroach I mean, men, spider men. What are you talking about? Look at some insects, right? Yeah. They don't have machinery, yet they're getting by, aren't they? They, they, they have their lives like we do. They get up, they wander about, they collect food, they tidy up, they fix stuff, they make their own house. We can't do any of that. So what I'm saying is, why aren't we using them? Why are these cockroaches with all these powers and stuff? Powers going about. So these powers. But how could we use them? How could we harness them? I just them? told you, dustbin men, or or whatever. That no, you mean. said that if they were also men, if they were cockroach men, we where's could the, use where's them. The, you've left a big bit out. But when that one-inch cockroach becomes a six-foot bloke wearing a, a jacket, it's just that we always use insects for like a bit of fun. You, you see flea circuses and all that, which is all very well. But I don't think it's getting the most out of them. Woke up at 9.55 a.m. As soon as I woke up, I looked at Suzanne and she looked at me. I said, did I tell you about the immune system? <laughs> <laughs> Suzanne started laughing. I said, it's amazing. She said, not now. <laughs> oh, oh, God! It's I was thinking that! Springing into action, he zips up his eyes are like... Did I tell you about the immune system? Oh, <laughs> shut up, Carl. Put the kettle on. Oh, God. Oh, fucking hell. Oh, shit, bad that. He's only gone and written it down. <laughs> the jingle there to announce a yet another reading from Carl Pilkington's diary. Um, my mum called me to ask me to look in some of the magazine shops in London for a magazine that she can't find. It's called UFO Data. <laughs> I said, I ain't heard of it. She said she's seen an advert for it in one of her ghost magazines. I love the fact that she can't even find the magazine about unidentified flying objects. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we get, uh, we get a clue She there. thinks, I think I saw something, but I don't know whether it was a magazine or not. <laughs> 
So we get uh, we get a clue there as to why you you uh, give any credence to this crap. Yeah, well, it's oh, you know, I mean, Mama Pilkington's into the same shit. A lot of space out there, isn't there? Mm. She said that this magazine has got new story about how Aldrin brackets astronaut has got some evidence that aliens exist. Yeah. I told her that I found out today that the days are about 36 minutes longer on Mars. We chatted about how this is how they are more advanced than us. Do you mean the Martians? Yeah, if they've, if they've got a longer day, that's more time that they're awake working on stuff. Right, yeah, we know that makes no difference at all. No, it does. Think about it, think yeah. about it. Look, think about it. Six o'clock here, Yeah. people are going, see you tomorrow, I'm going home. They'll be going, oh, another half hour. They've got a longer day. Productive. <laughs> and that's why they're able to fly. That's why they're whizzing around. <laughs> fly. Yeah, it's all oh, over the years. Christ almighty, what drivel. Suzanne got in from work at 11.30. I told her about the UFOs in Mars. <laughs> she said she's too tired to chat. I said, does it mean aliens will be more tired than us or do they get more sleep? I got no answer. <laughs> I love it when it Suzanne goes in. She never indulges no, you. No, it scares she... her. Anything with ghosts and UFOs, she sort of... It doesn't scare her, it, her. Does it scare bores her. her. No, it freaks her out. <laughs> <laughs> scares her. <clears throat> OK. <laughs> Read about a pub that is getting some stick because they've stopped a horse going in. It's been the horses regular for ages. But there's been some new owners who've taken over the pub and they said they're serving fresh fruit and don't want a horse in there anymore. <laughs> oh, God. I met Suzanne after she finished work and we went for a brew in another cafe. God, Jesus. It's always having a brew in a cafe. It's like a sitcom. <laughs> it is. Suzanne said I looked tired and fed up. She taught me some way to breathe that will relax me. I wasn't feeling that relaxed, though, because the person behind the counter was banging about making a coffee. Noise stresses me out. I wonder if less deaf people die of stress than people with working ears do. <laughs> oh, it's the theories. It's the it theories. It is such a noisy world, though, isn't it? It is. Oh, London is noisy, very noisy. I think just everywhere, just noise in general. They were saying yeah. how, like, every noise has been used at least five times or something. What do you mean? Because there's only so many noises in the world. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. No, there's only so many what noises. What do you mean every noise has been used five times? <laughs> I don't know what that means. I don't know what it means. Because I, I, every noise once has been used at least five times. <laughs> there's only so many noises. It's like a piano, isn't there? There's only so many notes. Yeah. And there's only so many noises. Right. But because there's so much stuff, the same noises are being used again. I don't know what that means. <laughs> By whom? Who's reusing the noise? By whatever. So, so a woodpecker like... when it's woodpecking. Yeah, yeah. Some some birds make noises that would sound like a Ford Escort. Just because there's there's only so many noises that people can use. <laughs> what is he talking about? Noises are a byproduct. Outside yeah. an instrument. Yeah. Noises and... are a byproduct. They a machine. They don't go. What should we make this <laughs> noise? Make this machine. It, it makes the noise it makes yeah, when but, it's doing something. But why does it make that noise? Why not pick another noise? They don't pick well, the who's noise. Picking the noise? That's a printing what... press makes the noise because it's the sound of the thing yeah. going down. Yeah. You so know, a hammer makes that noise because that's what it does. No one's going. Oh, can we make this make a different noise? No. It's it's a byproduct. I it's, know. So there's only so many noises. I don't know what you mean. When Stevenson's yeah, but... rocket came and I went... <laughs> I went, can you make it go... <laughs> no. It's what, that's the noise it made. I know, but then, say like a new frog comes out. Oh, for f what do you mean a new frog comes out? They find a new type of frog, right. it makes a noise, and yeah. they'll go, yeah, I knew it was going to sound like that. What are you talking because about? Because there's only so many noises. Nothing, no, no animal comes out and makes like a weird <laughs> noise, and you go, I've never heard that noise before. They go, oh, that sounds like a chicken, or it sounds like a <laughs> Ford Escort, or... <laughs> There's only so many what noises. What frog sounds like a Ford Escort? Well, no, but there can't be many, because you've used Ford Escort twice <laughs> as an analogy here, so you're running out of noises. You've I come can't. up with chicken and Escort so far. I can't explain But the problem it. is, a Ford Escort sounds a bit like an Austin Allegro, so I, I don't know. I know, yeah, yeah. And a chicken... <laughs> you're ripping off the turkey, you gun! <laughs> <laughs> Feeder. Come back around. He's getting all stressed again. You know we've only done an hour. I know. It's. I'll tell you what. This you know seems there's like another three. hour to go. I know. I can't. I don't know what it seems like to the, you know, the listeners. <laughs> I say I'll this. I'll tell you this. this. I'm not trying to be disrespectful, Carl, but I think maybe someone else should come in and press the buttons. 
Because I'm not sure you're across it. I don't think you can concentrate on talking and working at the same time. I'm not walking, sure you can... Walking, yeah, and I, eating. It, for you, it seems as oh, a bit no, like... don't say that. Look, he's gutted. No, it, there, there's a lot of gone wrong here. I say, I say, throw this desk out and get a real one. Seriously. Well, I think there's a, vis there's a Fisher Price one you can buy in uh, well, Argos that might be yeah, worth no, getting. Yeah, but yeah, we got there. We, we were stung because it was second hand, this one. But, um, uh, this is like the mere space station. I mean, it really is falling apart. Get a new one in. Let's not, you know, oh. I can't believe it. Get the... I mean, look at the... look at that! Look at the library, look. Gap. Look at the gaps in yeah, the library. Let's not go on about this, cos this isn't... this isn't good. <sighs> what? Whereas that quiz was. <laughs> <laughs> whereas that was good radio. You can join in and stuff But the that. problem yeah, okay. is, Carl, you... why'd you rush to do it? We... I told you before we should practice these things. That's Although, to be story. fair, Steve, I can't... I haven't got time to do anything, so at least Carl's coming up with stuff. But I don't mind, you know, running what through with it while got? you're having a kip outside. Really? What other ideas have you got? Have you got any other ideas, Carl? Because we're really- you've got another hour of it. Have you got well, anything we, at we, all? We, I've got that feature Educating Ricky, which is a bit of a play on words as well. Right? Do you know the- do you know the film, Steve? Educating Rita. Yeah. I see well, what then. you've done. I see what you've done. <laughs> Go on. I'm doing that and I teach Ricky stuff. Uh, <laughs> okay. what, 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 what do you teach me, Carl? Well, I've got a few different topics. Um, Go on. Do you know, like, how you taught me about Hitler and Che Guevara and Winston Churchill? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna come in with topics every week, and this week I've got, uh, hang Ghosts? No, Hanging Bacon is one of the topics. Say that again? Hanging Bacon. Hanging Bacon? All, all the titles- Francis Bacon? <laughs> no, all the titles are sort of named to sort of make- sort of tease you and get you more interested in it. Hanging Bacon? Well, you've right. certainly t intrigued- Go on, what's another title one? Uh, Hairy Chinese kid. <laughs> <laughs> Could I, I'm no. going for that one. Could if, I, there I mean, a, if there was a university degree yeah, with that yeah. title, yeah. No, I'm going to go for Hairy Chinese kid. And I think. the final one, yeah. a Alien gives man a beard. <laughs> <laughs> I, right. I alien gives man a beard. I am going to burst. Right, listen, Carl, you've got to tell me. Right, to first, right, let's do it in reverse No, we're not, we're not going to do it now, anyway. What do you mean? You, we've got to do it now. The, the, no. I mean, that's this is the first interesting thing you've said in an hour, okay? The listeners have just uh, been subjected to rubbish and, uh, oh, and mistakes and everything for the last <laughs> six months. Please, we've got to do Alien Gives Man a Beard. What is that? Tell us that. Right. Um, Sorry, this is just you telling me something, is it? Well, <laughs> this feature is you telling me something. I'm well, teaching you something. Educating Ricky. Right? So, are we playing it now? We're already into this feature. <laughs> well into this feature, are we? Yeah, I suppose we are, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Should there not be a jingle or something? Yeah, can we have a well, jingle? there's no point, cos look, I come up with ideas and you dismiss them straight away, so I'm not wasting my time making stuff. Right. If you don't like Well, okay, it. let's play- let's play Educating Ricky. Right. Brilliant. Go right. right so ding a ling a ling a ling a ling. Educating Ricky. Right. What are we going for then? Hanging the bacon. Airy Chinese kid. Alien gives man a beard. I think Alien gives man a beard. I'd like to do that. Right. There's this fellow. I think it happened in America. Uh, and he saw a bright light in the sky. And uh, <laughs> God, if you're bored. And he stood there. This is a true story, is it? Yeah. He stood there. <laughs> yeah, it's cause it isn't, Steve. <laughs> and he saw this bright light and it came closer and closer and it was a UFO, right? <laughs> yep. And he looked at it and it disappeared, right? And he gets back in his car. <laughs> he looks in the mirror. And he looks in the mirror. Yep. He's only got a beard. Yes. <laughs> you sure it wasn't it. someone else who got in the car? And he was still standing out there? No, right. What? And it turned out, yeah. he got home and said to his wife or, or his girlfriend, uh, it's a bit weird. <laughs> so I just got out of the car to look at a bright light, and I, I, I got back in the car and I grew a beard, and she said, never mind your beard, where have you been for three days? <laughs> and what had happened is... He the, passed out because he was pissed. No. <laughs> the, the UFO had taken uh, him for three days, yeah. but he'd only thought that he'd, he'd only looked at it and it went away. Yeah. But what had yeah, happened is, yeah, yeah. he took him, and yeah. he grew a beard because he hasn't had a shave. Um, so, right, okay. T t I mean, was Will Smith or Tommy Jones anything to do with this at all? Did, uh, were you, did you see this on a video, maybe, and thought it was an educational film? No, it's from a book that some kind person sent in to me. 
here. Um, Can I just ask again, just, just again, I'm just throwing this right back at you. Um, do you think there's any other possible answer here? Right? A man is absent for three days from home. He's the, grown the a beard. The length of time that it could take to grow a beard, lest we forget. Um, what if he hadn't actually <coughs> seen a bright light in the sky? What, what if, if he was lying? Drunk? What if he was lying? He'd got knocked unconscious. Mm. He'd had a car crash. Just lying. No, things. just lying. Or he it, was just lying. Yeah, he'd, he'd been on a bender, getting pissed for three yeah, days and with his mates. that was his mates. excuse to his wife. And they went, what are you gonna, what, Dennis, what are you gonna tell your wife? <laughs> um, well, wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute, uh, wait a minute, 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 wait a minute. She's not gonna believe I was out with you, lads. Uh, yeah. uh, Just say you're only away for a minute. No, she and no, I wasn't away from it because of the beard. <laughs> oh, yeah, look, it looks like you've been out for three days. Well, we have, that's <laughs> exactly. right. Okay, we've got to cover that then. <laughs> uh, alien abduction. Great one. Okay, let's try that. Do you see? That's a little scenario there that could have been played So, out. when you say educating Ricky, what have I learnt from this? Never listen to you again. That's all I've learnt so far. Never listen well, to yeah, you. Yeah, we'll add a little bit more in here, right? To well, no, uh, what do you mean, add a little bit more? We'll add a bit more to this, to this, what I'm educating you about. Go on. Right? Um, there's only a law in America that says, <laughs> if you touch a UFO, you're gonna get done. Now, why would they make a rule? I don't know that. Do you know, like all our rules have a code. Uh, Carl, I, I, I genuinely do not know what you're talking about. Right? Do you know, like how air? Do, like, do you know? I what have no idea. Right. Okay. Do you know, like over <laughs> Rick, here? I'm listening to Capital and these headphones. <laughs> <laughs> I got, I got Foxy on from yesterday. Uh, right, let's let's bin that. No <laughs> way, he's great. No, I, I want to hear about airy Chinese kid. <laughs> let's play a tune. And okay, let's play a tune. Come back, airy Chinese, Chinese kid. Play definitely. Some, some doors. Yeah, I yeah. just thought uh, I'd go oh. back. Uh, take it back to the sixties. Uh, this is a tune that a friend of mine sent. If me. you touch a UFO, you get done. Soul Kitchen from the Doors. Shambles today. Mm. This. Definitely love this. Surely, have you started seeing this now? Virgin are starting plugging Virgin Galactic. I think it's something like mm. two hundred thousand quid, mm. and they you'll get a chance to go in a space shuttle into mm. space. Carl thoughts. Go into space? Wouldn't it be a fascinating experience to go into space and look back at the Earth? I mean, what, at what point are you all meant to be happy? <laughs> do you know what I mean? You're floating about up there, and you because you don't get out, do you? Uh, what, you mean to do some duty-free shopping? I'm just talking, you don't go floating about, do you? You stay in your seat. Mm. Well, they no. probably let you move around on the shuttle. Yeah, I know, but I'm talking about getting out. For me, when you what, go you want to get out into space? Yes, but that's what I'm saying. When you go on holiday, the flight bit isn't the best bit of the holiday, is it? That's the bit you've got to do. So what I'm saying is you've got to stay on this and then you go back home. So you don't take luggage, right? I don't see the point. Right, so you're there, you're sat in your own clothes for the whole time, same clothes the whole time. But I don't understand what, what, what is the point. I think it's the view, I think it's two things. I think it's the view mm. and being able to be part of an exclusive club. I went into space. Uh, it's, it's all that thing about man conquering nature. And, and you're one of that elite few that have managed to pop up, see the world from a distance that no one else can see it from, and then pop down. All that way just for the view? Yeah. Is it worth it? <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of other places I haven't seen anyway. Right, before I think about that. I think if you've done everywhere, I haven't been to Scotland yet. Right? <laughs> right yeah. I'm not being funny, but do you know what I mean? So just have a look in your back garden before you go looking in someone else's. In space. Yeah. Yeah. What would make it a, a trip worthwhile for you? I mean, if you did go into space, if we gave it to you free of charge, we said, Carl, go up I know space. the answer. I know the answer to this, Steve. He's thinking, I'd like to meet some aliens that can talk like I do, yeah. and I can understand them, and they can tell me something. Like, like what? Oh, uh, they met God, he was all right. That, that's the sort of thing, that's what he's going to say. He'd like them to look like monkeys in spacesuits. Yeah. That would be his ideal thing. He'd like to go to the planet of the yeah, apes. Yeah, he would love to go that. to the... Look, he's nodding. He's yeah. nodding. Thoughts, Carl? Well, yeah, that, that'd be brilliant. What would be brilliant? Seeing a little alien and that, having a chat with him, finding out what's been going on. <laughs> <laughs> what's been going on? No, no. But, <sighs> but don't you think that, like, I mean, <laughs> if you bought me that as a present, right, yeah. either of you, yeah. I wouldn't be that happy. For me, that's a little bit like... Well, this is what's annoying, because we've got you a trip <laughs> to space and together. a goat. Yeah. yeah we can... <laughs> Do you know how, like, I'm, I'm sort of, I am interested in sort of going on another planet? Right. Carl, you are on another planet, mate. No, no, but do you know what I mean? It it would be quite sort of interesting. How do you think you'd get there? Well, yeah, you, you'd go on a rocket and stuff, but what I'm saying is, at least you know when you get there, you're getting out, you're having a bit of a wander. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I wouldn't be happy in just the journey bit of it, that's, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> that's great!
great, isn't it? But, but the thing is, right, I was because I was looking into it a bit because I, I was reading about the the Virgin uh, yeah. thing, right? And I was reading something that in uh, in 1971, right? Three of them went up there. There was one bloke in the rocket, right? The other two wandered off, had a had a walk about, seeing what rocks they could find. Right? And that bloke who was in the rocket, right? He was the loneliest man ever in the world. <laughs> I don't know what I to don't do. Know what that was. I don't know what to do. I don't know if that's some sort of profound poetry or I don't know. I, <laughs> I, do, you know, do, I, do you know what I think he's trying to say? He's trying to say he was, by definition, uh, a human furthest away from all other human contact. Yeah, yeah that's what yeah. I said. Yeah, okay. Now, you know, you said loneliest. Loneliest to evokes an emotion. Yeah. Yeah. But it's like he started crying and writing poetry and listening to uh, Morrissey records. But what I was thinking is, do you think when he got up in the morning, he still bothered to put his clothes on? <laughs> <laughs> that's the first thing that came into your mind. No, when just you because I always, you know, at the end of the day, even if, like, my girlfriend Suzanne's out at work and that, I'm not happy walking about with everything out because you never know what's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just mean, you know, you never know yeah. someone's going to turn up. No, I don't like what I don't like. No, I, I, I always pop some pants on or a towel, well, even if I'm not alone. Not always. Because <laughs> <laughs> I've knocked on your door when you've when you've been stood there with... Yeah. No, he's yeah, taking his trousers off. No, I did it especially, oh, knowing, right, knowing right. that you were there. I've done it especially to annoy you. Oh, right. Yeah, so... <laughs> <laughs> but do you know what I mean? Do you think he? Do you think he was walking about the rocket with his tackle out, or what did he go? Well, it? you know, no one's watching here. Do you, do you reckon I mean? it floats up or down? Well, um, if you uh, are the man who was up in a space rocket and was for a short period the loneliest man in the world, we'd love to hear from you. We'd love to hear what you did with your time, um, how lonely you felt, and also, lonely. did you did you float around um, with your cock and balls out? Let's accept, right, that at some point about. 13, 14 billion years ago, there was nothing. There was no space for the nothing to be in. There was no darkness, no light, no, no, nothing. Okay, literally nothing except what is nearly a point in space that contained everything in the known universe. Okay, suddenly that exploded, and in a matter of minutes, the universe was pretty much as it is now. And in all the debris, in all the dust, things started to cling together. One of which was the Earth. Can I have Carl pick up the story from there? Yeah! So, there we are. We've got the Earth. We've got this big... What happened next? ...planet. Um, probably nothing for quite a bit. Okay. Yeah. Just sort of floated about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it wasn't causing a problem because it wasn't annoying anyone. No. You see, we don't get a chance of that these days. No. You pop something down, someone says, move that. <laughs> Dangerous, what is it? Yeah. Back then, nothing. So it's hanging around, and if you leave something somewhere, something will sit on it. Right. <laughs> okay, if you leave something somewhere, something will sit on it, yeah? Well, say like a, a, a bin bag. I can put a bin bag outside. Bin men don't come until Friday. Sure. Mm. But I want to get, I don't want it in the house. Sure, it's got yeah. chicken in it. Yep. I pop it, I pop <laughs> it outside, right? Um, it's sat there for a few days now. Just time, time, like, you know, a, a day before the bin men are coming, yeah. I pick that up and take it round the front. Right. It's got a slug living under it. Uh huh. Right. Like one of those little wood lice things. Yeah. Might yeah. be there. Yeah. Uh, snail. Yep. Um, yeah. what's, the, what's your point? Your We've point, got a young earth. It's four and a half billion years ago, yeah. it's whizzing round the sun. Something's gonna sit on it. Yeah, something something had to sort of happen, didn't it? I'll tell you what it's like. Go on. In the same way, um, penicillin. Go on. Happened. Go on. It was, the bread was sat there, it yeah. goes off. Mm. Air would have, uh, created the greenness. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! This sounds like the Bible! <laughs> that is, that is like the Bible! Air created the greenness! <laughs> That's amazing! Carry on, carry on, because I wanna, I'm, I'm, in, I'm learning here, I'm learning. And once you've got something, that yeah. leads to otherness. 
<laughs> this is like this is like a monk. Who <laughs> sat down? Oh, We're all sat cross-legged listening to the yeah, wise old man. I know. What are you gonna do? I'm gonna write uh, a thing of how everything was created. But hang on, carry really? on. Because I'm interested. Yeah. Well, so where are we? So, <laughs> so we've got. So we've got. We had greenness, and now we've got. So something. the air created the greenness, and then what is it? Then we have what was just it? otherness Other, from otherness. the greenness. Because right. once other, you've got, once you've other, got, from greenness comes otherness. Once you've got one thing, others come. Yes. <laughs> the air created the greenness. <laughs> then you got otherness. If you create something, others will come. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Build it, and they will but come. But it's, it's sort of right. In, 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 yeah, no, 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 what would I see? Um, not that much. You wouldn't want to stay. But there's greenness. Little little patches little of greenness. Little patches of greenness. Okay. Little bit of rubble knocking around. <laughs> a bit of rubble. There was a bit of rubble. Okay. Um, we've still got a long way to go. We want to get to life, don't we? Okay. So let's let's get, so, let's skip forward so, and so, to life. So everything was right. Okay. It was the right distance from the sun. Okay. Yeah, but even if it, it had, wasn't, wait, we'd, it, we'd have, we would still been created. No, we wouldn't. We would. Have. Something no, we would have, have done. No, we wouldn't. Have. I want to hear Carl's opinion on this, Rick. I'm not interested in facts. I want to hear Carl's so opinion. So, are you saying, um, if if the atmosphere right around the Earth wasn't about ninety nine uh, percent nitrogen and oxygen with one percent other gases, we'd have still had something else. Something would have been around. I'm not saying it might, it might it might be better than us. It might be worse than us. What would it look like? Um, well, it's it's hard to say because they say, don't they, that it's the conditions that mould you into the shape and colour, sure. and uh, you know everything else that makes you the person that you are. Okay, yeah. this takes Pluto. We know that's the farthest away, so it's it is dark and cold there. Right. What? How do you imagine the creatures that will develop there will Big look? Big eyes like? and airy. <laughs> How did they evolve? How did they evolve, though? Because we evolved. Just... Hang on. You right. always say yeah. animals change to suit the conditions. I'd have thought if if planet's dark, you don't need eyes because things that live underground or at the bottom of the ocean, they don't they don't have um, eyes or uh, or, or colour because there's no point. Yeah, but what I'm talking about, are we saying we're living inside Pluto or on the top of it like we do here? Why would we live inside Pluto? There's well, no, I wouldn't, it, it, I wouldn't. It, it couldn't support life, full stop. But, but um, this um, is one of the most ridiculous conversations we've ever had. He seriously considers whether we live is based inside on or outside. On a ridiculously Pluto. false premise. No, Carl, we're listen. saying now right. that the world's overcrowded. Right. There's too many people on it. Right. We're running out of houses. People right. are living in basements. Right. Now that's only one step away from from being molish. <laughs> We're already going underground because we're running out of space. Being molish. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Right. Come on. Keep it like, let him. I want to hear his point. Is yeah. that like being Amish? <laughs> so uh, what's your saying? Molish people. They don't acknowledge the the crust of the earth. So you're saying within five years there's going to be sort of mole-like people living in basement flats well, with well, no eyes. But hold on, though. In your, in your, in, according to you, the lower they go, the colder and darker they go, the hairier and better eyes they'll have. Uh, well, it depends. No, I was only saying mm. they'd have better eyes mm. if they were on a dark planet where mm. they're outside, so they still have to look out for things that they could trip over. If we're going, if we're going, <laughs> if we're going underground, <laughs> they're, they're sole concern. <laughs> That's the whole evolution. Is about what? We don't want to trip over. I don't want to graze my knees. <laughs> <laughs> You've got knees. They got them on Earth. <laughs> Coincidence, isn't it? Hub, hub. What I'm saying is right, and I've always said this. Go on. We are not the same as the first man that nature made. No. No, we're not, no. And that's where we went wrong. And if we didn't interfere, we might have been more suited to the conditions now. And in aura. Right. I'm cold. She doesn't want double glazing. Why not? Just because she's worried that when people come round and sort of knock on the door, she won't hear them, because it's, <laughs> it's all sort of double glazed. But they're knocking on the door. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but bell. she said that, no. She didn't like a bell. It makes her jump too much. Well, what, how, how, do they, how do they get in now? Well, it's a thin door and thin glass. You hear it. It's not like soundproof, like double glazing is. What? So they she, they have to knock. They on knock the like that on the door, and she can hear that because but it's like a wooden door. Why are they going to double glaze the door? Is it a glass door? No, they want to put that PVC door in. in with hang the on. So glass. she's scared, but you don't want a doorbell because that alarms her. But the knocking is fine. The knocking's fine because you, you get to know knocks. Why don't they have a bell that when you press it, it makes that noise? Because they haven't done that yet. 
Well, Maybe yeah, that's yeah, an you, idea. Could, you could do a sample of a like that. So when they press the doorbell, she hears. That's easy. That's done. You could sort that out for her. Well, I don't want to start getting dragged into it because. But why don't you tell her? Say, Auntie Nora, have double glazing. Be warm. Be safe. Hit the knock of the bell on the doubly door. This is it, though, isn't it? She wouldn't be around now if it wasn't for people interfering, coming up with tablets, uh, m making weak people live longer. Right. <laughs> Are you annoyed at that? You're annoyed. I know he's such a fascist, isn't he? Anti yeah. Nora, a weak person who has been allowed yeah. to live. No, Eugenics is where you, you'd be up here. Do you recycle and not leave the tap running and turn off lights because you're worried? about a child born in 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 a hundred years time no 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 because i don't think um at the end of the day we have to face facts here go on the world is, is old hold on all right okay the yeah, world's old. old really old and it's the same as if you've got a gran mm. who's 70 yeah um there's not much you can do for her <laughs> you can yeah you can say you're warm Mm. But at the end of the day, she's still going to be shit in her pants. <laughs> she's still going to be, you know, forgetting things mm, right. and all the rest of it. And you might be taking care of her, but at the end of the day, the good days are gone. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, in a way, like the world, it's got to a point that it's old. And yeah, we can say turn the tap off, turn the lights off, mm. uh, close the windows, stop letting heat out. Uh, the earth, in metaphorically, is shitting its pants. You've only got to look at what's happening, right? Mm. It's freezing, isn't it, at the moment, out mm. there? Yeah. Ice everywhere, mm. snow everywhere. Mm. Now, an old person, what happens to them? They're always cold. Mm. It's like the earth, isn't it? Brilliant. The earth now is freezing. Yeah. It yeah. feels it yeah. feels the cold it's more than ever. It's winter as well, it's also because it's winter, but yeah. <laughs> and I think if you try and make it better now, you end up doing more damage. Does that, well, that make any sense at all? Does that make any sense at all? Well, just... You can sometimes, sometimes it's too late to make something better. Like, I've had old relations who smoke like 50 a day. Mm. Doctor said you've got to stop smoking. They stop smoking, two weeks later they're dead. <laughs> Shouldn't have stopped them smoking. Yeah, their insides, the well, their, 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 their insides are used to all that pollution. Yeah. Set the pollution away, what will the world what? do? Oh, good. That is this a good is point. Interesting. This is scientifically grounded, is it? You've done a lot of the research, read a lot of the information about this. Or is it just a wild harebrained speculation again, backed up with nothing? Is it bullshit? How would you sell, honestly, sell these places to me? Uh, we're coming in a, your travel agent, it's Carl Pilkington's travel. He's been around the world. He's seen all the sights. So we're going there. Hello. Um, we're thinking of going on holiday. My, 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 me and my husband, Stephen. Well, what are you thinking? China. China. Like mm. China. Um, what are we like? Where, where have you been in the past? Well, we've been to Wales and we, we don't really understand the language. What are they saying? Don't know what they're saying at all. Oh, don't... forget China then. Oh. They're, they're, they're worse than the Welsh with their language. It's wow. mental. There's no, there's no order to it whatsoever. It's just, it's mental language. It's like aliens. So you don't want to go there. Have you thought of anywhere else? Hang on, you're supposed to be selling us a holiday to China. No, no, I'm not selling you. I've just got to sell you a holiday. So I'd right. say you don't want to go there. Okay. How old are you? Oh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm 72. Right, well, you I'm don't 23. <laughs> well, oh, to be quite honest, I thought he'd be a bit more virile. Even though he's 23, his penis is actually 102. Why does he have that put on? Why does he have that put on? Is this any use? <laughs> I, don't what, I don't know what this is. <laughs> oh, this is a break. Oh, I'm sweating. Well, uh, now time for one of our regular features. Monkey news. Do the jingle. Oh, chimpanzee that monkey news. <laughs> what what we're doing here is, right, is uh just giving you a bit of bit of monkey news that's that's gone on, right? Where a monkey's been involved in it. Good little story in that. Yeah. Uh are you familiar with the one that went into space? The first uh, the first sort of thing they ever sent up there. Before man did it and all that. You see, this is what annoys me with it really. Armstrong gets all the, all the glory, but do you know who went up there before, before him? A monkey. Yeah. And what happened is they taught it um, what buttons to hit at the time that it needed to hit them, and, and the way they did this was, like, give it bananas. It was like, hit the red button, and it hit the red button, they'd give it a banana. Right. And they go, right, reverse is the green one, hit the green one. And then they do that and go, there's a banana. And then they go, right, hit reverse, and it go, and get a banana. Hit right. the red, so it was taking commands on like headphones. Right, but how were they giving it the banana? Is that how you learn to do radio? <laughs> how were they giving it the banana? 
What do you mean? No, well, this is before it went. You, do, you oh, wouldn't just go and put a monkey in it and go, there you go, get on with it. They'd sort of put him in one of them capsules that you get. Yeah. And they were th on headphones. I, I don't believe this happened. Well, I'm telling you the story now, so the monkey I don't think they trained it to do anything. I think they sent it up there and he put electrodes coming out of it to no, see what... what uh, it wasn't any of that. They did a thing like they do. Like, right. Like they can with animals. If you give something, uh, you know, like a treat, you can teach it how to do it. It's just like a dog, isn't it? When it's you... called Pavlovian conditioning. However... That was to see if it would salivate or go over to no, a particular it, corner, yeah. not if it could control a spacecraft. Next one up. So next one up. It, as far as the, the monkey's not sat there going, oh, I'm a bit under pressure here, it's a rocket. All that's knowing is I'm getting a banana if he hit that button. That's all the monkey's thinking about. Right? <laughs> they wouldn't, but billions well, of space but dollars. But how can they be sure that it's going to press the button at the right moment? Because it's got headphones on. <laughs> It's not like willy-nilly, it's not just like pop it in there and see... Willy-nilly, was that? Like, what's to stop it from just hitting it any old time? Because it's a monkey and it's, it's not a human. Because he's trained now. But oh, anyway, he's trained, so he's listen, fully trained, yeah, go So on. what happened is, anyway... Oh, this is absolute rubbish. They pop the monkey in there, Yeah. it's got his headphones on, they're going, right, hit the green one, and uh, I think there's something there that a little banana comes out to keep the same... <laughs> no, you're making this up. I'm not, it's the same... There's no way that they made uh, uh, a right, spacecraft so, so can, that had know. a banana dispenser. Right, There's so, no way in this world that they made a spacecraft that could go into mm, outer space, right, So, what, so manned you're, so by you're, a monkey mm, with a banana dispenser. So you're saying that it's easy to send something up to space but you don't believe there's a little banana machine? <laughs> right, OK, See? so... So it comes to the launch day... Monkeys, monkeys sat in there. Uh, everyone's ready. Bananas are stocked up and all the rest of it. They go right. Hit the green button. Right, and the rocket goes off and what have you. No, they would not make the monkey launch the rocket. Carl, so, you are you are living in a, a so, cartoon world. So the rocket goes off. Right? <laughs> this is absolute bollocks. It's all going well. You are. You, I mean, I don't know it's what all, you're going to. It's, it's not going well. It's going There's well. no way a monkey launched it's a going... rocket. There is no way a monkey launched a rocket, so you idiot. it's all going on, so they're going, hit the left button, and, it's, and it goes a little bit left. left button? Right, oh, so... well-known spacecraft command. This is Houston. Hit the left button. <laughs> oh, brilliant. This is what happened in Apollo 13. Hit the left button. So it, you it, are, oh, it you goes are. left. Yeah, it goes left. So it goes left, and it's, it's going away. Left! It's, it goes no. left! Yeah. No, the moon. So You're going right. It goes. It goes for the moon. Everything. Everything's going well. Right. Uh, they get up there. It does whatever it does. It reverses. It comes back. <laughs> right. So then. You are so, honestly. You are brain dead. So it's you long, are one of the most stupid people. That I would rather have mm, the monkey drive right, listen, me home than you. So the thing is, so it lands back. Yeah. It does a good job and everything. It gets out. Um, and this it's is sick this of is bananas. this is where this is where it turns a bit sad because after it done that mission yeah. right because it happened and it, and it was all safe and everything the next one would have been to send man right so the monkey enjoyed it and it was like well I want to do it again right but they were like so how did they know that how did they know just, it just the way it looked and what have you it was like <laughs> fuck off just the way it looked so, you, are, you are a maniac. So the thing is, though, right, so after it had done that, it was on such a high, right, <laughs> yeah. it, could, it could never get that high again. There was nothing. Drugs. There was nothing that it could do. Went on tour, did it? It, did, it, it sort of ended up killing itself. <laughs> because it could never never get that buzz that it right, got. Right, that was absolute bollocks. None of that is true, except <laughs> they sent a monkey into space. And I'll, and I'll, mm. um, I'll check that. Absolute drivel. So, it, in your mind, it committed suicide. It, had a, it went on a crazy bender of drinking drugs and women. And like then, it does happen, you hear about it. it was found it. in a motel room. <laughs> So, Carl, if you had to go to a new planet, don't worry about starting life again. They've got sort of like these breeder clones that do all that. But you can choose six people from this world to take to start this whole new world, OK? So you need, you know... As I say, you don't need to So worry what's about... happening here? Is this... Is this... It's going to be wiped out, OK? It's going to be wiped out. But there's enough on this spaceship for you and five other people. Okay, and they've got them there. They've got these. They've got these sort of breeder clones there. So it's going to be populated. You're going to have the workers, the drones, everything like that. But you want to take six, I suppose, sort of um, uh, world lords to teach, to lay down the politics, the 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 teachings, 
the laws, the government. I'd hate okay. This. I'd hate it. Um, and how long have I got to make a decision on it? Uh, to the end of this podcast. Right, go. Who do you take? Who's the first person you take and why? Uh, and where, where are we going? We, Mars. <sighs> okay, so a, a planet where there's a, 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 an atmosphere. I've got to know where I'm going because I've got uh, to sell it to the people who I'm asking. There's no point when okay, I go, are you coming with me? Where are you going? I don't know. It's <laughs> just like this world. There's There's oxygen, there's seas... There's rivers, there's forests, there's animals, okay? But we're going to populate it with uh, the human race, and you can choose six people to lord over this new uh, kingdom. You want the best people for the job. Yeah. So, who, who's the first person? Probably, um... Patrick Moore. Why? <laughs> why, why would you take Patrick Moore? Just because he, he knows, knows his way about up there, doesn't he? He'll know the way. So just just have him. I think that will whoever I pick next, if they see that he's going, they'll go right. You know, it's going to be a long Moore's journey. As board. it is, you don't want someone who's going to be going. Is it left here? Is it right? Or, or, do you know what I mean? And he could play the xylophone on the journey. But but is, uh, Carl uh, is more the most useful person to have if you've only got six because he may be very useful getting to the planet. No, but, but I've once always you've wanted got there, to meet him as well. I've always wanted a chat, and that'd be a good chance, wouldn't it? When I'm in a rocket, how long is it taking to get to Mars? I don't know, a, a year. That's what I mean. No, it's so. not Mars. It's somewhere else. Okay, so it's a year to get there, and then yeah, well, that's what I mean. So it's a good chance to have a chat with him uh, okay. about stuff. Um, so Matt and Moore. I think he'd be up for it as well, to be honest. Yeah. Um, I think I think you know. It's well, his, why do you why do you think that? Just because he spent his whole life talking about what's going on up there, isn't it? And yet he's never been, and I feel sorry for him. You know, most people, when, they, when they're when they into something, they get to go to a place, don't they? Sure. Uh, the people uh, who don't know who Patrick Moore is, he's um, an 80-year-old uh, <laughs> astronomer. astronomer. Yeah, that's what I mean, so let him have, a, have a, a bit of a good life. So Moore's on board. Yeah, Patrick Moore, he's he's on. Right, out five others. Four others now. Uh, Jamie Oliver. <laughs> why Why would you take Jamie Oliver? <laughs> just food and that. You just thought you need someone, because they say that, like, you uh, you know, you can feel down if you don't eat. Um, he couldn't convince eight-year-olds to eat a carrot. What's he going to do in this brave new world? They're all going to be on turkey Twizzlers. I think he's he's got the right attitude. He wouldn't be faffing about. Remember, <laughs> we've we've landed now on this new world. Yeah. I don't know what it's like. The people who've Listen, made I love go. Jamie Oliver. I think he's great. Yeah. But he wouldn't be in my five people to start a new world. That's all I'm saying. Nor would Patrick Moore, because well, he knew the way. <laughs> well, what chef would you pick? I wouldn't <laughs> pick a chef. Why would I pick a chef? Because you want someone who's going to... Like I say, food's important. When you're low, there's nothing better. If you're a bit fed up, there's nothing better than having a good... But, Carl, I don't think you've quite grasped that these people have to start civilization again. They have to yeah. be wise, wise people who can make the laws. Yeah. And Keep before you do all that, you need a good meal. So th Jamie Oliver, he'll be that's his job. It's like when we get there, that's when he kicks in. Right. right He's okay. the first one really. Can I suggest gets going. Just to save two places on Patrick Moore and Jamie Oliver, take a map and a cookbook. <laughs> okay, who's number three? What sort of state is this world in? Does it need oh, it's gonna take a fucking gardener. It's yeah. it's like the it's uh, It's the world but new. It's the it's that exactly. It's the world, but new, untouched by humans. There's there've been no fossil fuels burnt, no machinery, no wars, just this Garden of Eden. And you, Patrick Moore, and Jamie <laughs> Oliver pitch up. <laughs> Plus, who else? Carl, go now. First thought. Attenborough. <laughs> Again, he's a genius, and he's a, you know he's a, he's a bit of a hero of mine. But I don't know if we need Attenborough, just because I reckon if it's a new world, you're saying it's the same. But they always say, don't they, that all worlds are different. So I'd want him there, just to sort of when we're roaming around, because we'll all stick together for a bit, won't we? Mm. Uh, yeah. When we're roaming around, then they'll be sick of the sight of you. Uh, they go, let's lose Carl. But you've got two men. So far, we've got a combined age of about 150. <laughs> I mean, if you're starting a brave new world, dare I say it, not going to be around very long. Shouldn't you be taking some younger, fresher blood? No, not really, because they haven't lived, have they? These have lived, and they'll they, they can so and they're useful. Like I say, Patrick Moore's done his bit; he's got us there. Uh, Oliver's cooked us a dinner. 
Day two, I reckon we'd end that on day one there. We'd have a dinner, we'd all have a chat. I don't think you're thinking of the future. I it's think a you're thinking trip. I think you're thinking of the journey and then the first night. <laughs> <laughs> ah! Okay, okay. So, so you've got David Attenborough, yeah. you've got Patrick Moore, you've got Jamie, Oliver, you've got two other places. I get the feeling that you're not so much recruiting people for a new world as I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. <laughs> uh, as a dinner party with <laughs> yeah. people you'd like to meet that you've seen on the telly. <laughs> oh. Uh, Come on, in two more. I'd text someone who's a bit daft. So. No, you don't need to, Carl. That's covered, believe us. Yeah, no, believe no, that's what I mean, though. I don't want them having to go at me going, why are you here? I'd put a, point the attention somewhere else to text someone else who'd sort of wind them up. So who's I'm, that, then? Paul Denan or someone <laughs> like that. <laughs> it really is. I'm a celebrity. <laughs> so you've got, you've got Patrick Moore, you've got David Attenborough, you've got Jamie Oliver and Paul Denan. <laughs> And they're, a starting, brand new world. they're starting life again. <laughs> okay then, brilliant. Oh god. Right, one more. This is an amazing. This is a, it's going to be. I'd love to go back and visit this in a thousand years. What teachings they laid down? Oh god. Don't know. It have to be uh, a woman. I think you got to have a woman in that little group, haven't you? Is could have another another woman chef or. <laughs> It's mainly eating. It's it's mainly chef. Oh, he's God. got that covered with Oliver, but no, no, I he's got to take Nigella in case he's in a <laughs> cream cake kind of mood. Oh God! Oh God! Delia Smith was furious. She packed her bags and everything. <laughs> or a nurse. Now you're thinking, Abby Titmus. 